Man, I can't wait to start my adventure on this new undiscovered planet. Huh, well aren't you a cute little guy in an ugly way, I guess. Oh, look at this. Huh, what are you- Oh, God! Hang on, so I just eat this and I get upgrades. Um, oh, okay. Oh. oh, God, that was awful. Oh, great, now my bones are growing tumors. Man, this place cannot get any wet. Okay, so this is how we're gonna start the video, huh? Hi, my name's Jacob, and welcome to my half-assed review on Journey to the Savage Planet. I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna rest here for a little bit. Journey to the Savage Planet is a sci-fi action-adventure game made by Typhoon Studios and came out in 2020. Think of this game as a much more goofier and colorful version of Subnautica without the ocean and much, 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 much less terrifying. This game can either be relaxing or sometimes make you want to throw your controller out the window, due to the game having a few tricks up its sleeve. With the intro out of the way, let's get started with... The game has a bright and cartoony look to it, which we haven't seen too often on this channel. It reminds me of games like High on Life or Slime Rancher that also have a bright and cartoony look to them. These graphics really help amplify the goofiness of this game, as well as giving you a nice break from all the dark and brooding games that have come out lately. The game also does a great job on combining video game graphics with real life video recording. The creature designs also look great, from some of the creatures having multiple different variants and some of them being really goofy or just really freaking annoying. And finding new areas and circuits not only feels rewarding, but also expands and really helps show how goofy this planet can be. In this game, you play as an astronaut who was sent on a mission by Kindred's Aerospace, the fourth best interstellar space exploration company to explore a brand new planet called ARY-26. You were told that this planet had no intelligent life, only to discover that there are multiple alien artifacts and structures all over the planet. And now it's up to you to explore these alien structures and learn more about this alien technology and its history. This story is full of goofy moments and funny humor. This game is not to be taken seriously in any way, and I honestly love that. Because like I said before, with all these games coming out about revenge, war, and leaving a trail of hate and discontent, even though those games are fun, it is nice to take a break from those and play a game that's bright, colorful, and not meant to be taken super seriously. The gameplay is pretty simple. The best way I can compare this to is something like High on Life with a dash of Subnautica. You go around discovering new plants, artifacts, and alien life while also trying your best to defend yourself from hostiles and upgrading your equipment to help with your exploration. The part of this game that got me hooked was the exploration. There was so much to discover and you'd be surprised on how one upgrade can open up so much of the game. The game isn't too hard, but it does have its challenges not just with the enemies but also with the terrain. I'm not gonna lie, I died way too many times in the lava section of the game when you are trying to get your grappling hook upgrade. Mainly because of two reasons. One, I didn't know that some of the platforms could sink, and two, because of those little bastards that wait until you're near the lava and knock you in. Similar to any Souls-like game, when you die you lose all of your stuff and you have to go back where you died to get it back, but if you die a second time, you lose all of it. The enemies are fun to fight, but I wish they were more spread out in the game. In the beginning area, you fight these octopus-like creatures, but that's really the only threat in the beginning. Obviously, there are more enemies as you progress, but they all kind of just stay in one area. I did just beat the first boss, so maybe there will be more variety in the next area. Also, they are making a second game, so hopefully there will be more enemies. There are multiple ways to upgrade your character, from getting materials to upgrade your weapons and gear, but also eating this weird orange goo that upgrades your character's health, stamina, all that kind of stuff. Overall, I did have a good time playing this game and taking a break from the more serious games. I do recommend playing this if you want a good laugh and just want to turn off your brain for a little. My overall score for this game is an 8 out of 10 screaming little bastards. And that has been my half-assed review on Journey to the Savage Planet. I hope you all enjoyed today's video, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe to help out the channel, and comment down below which game you want me to review next. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.